Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. Sodium is an essential nutrient, but excess sodium can be harmful. This video has 12 tips for reducing added sodium in your diet. The most common source of sodium is salt. Humans need and crave salt. It is programmed in our DNA and taste buds. Dietary sodium comes from two sources, added and naturally occurring. Most foods have some sodium. Naturally occurring sodium in foods provides a few hundred milligrams a day. For example, 8 ounces of milk provides about 125 milligrams of naturally occurring sodium. This homemade meal has about 250 milligrams of naturally occurring sodium. A restaurant version of this same meal has about 1600 milligrams of sodium. The difference comes from added sodium, about one half teaspoon in this example. When it comes to prepared foods, there are other sources of sodium besides salt. For the home cook, two alternate sources of sodium are baking soda and MSG. The first tip for reducing sodium in your diet is to go slow. A diet of prepared foods can provide 6,000 milligrams or more of added sodium daily. The recommended daily amount of sodium is equivalent to about one teaspoon of salt. If your current diet provides two, three, or even four times that amount, it's impractical trying to cut thousands of milligrams of sodium from your diet overnight. Give your taste buds a few months to adjust to a lower salt diet. Reducing sodium does not mean completely giving up salty or high sodium foods. It means reducing the amount of salty and high sodium foods in your diet. This sandwich roll has 450 milligrams of sodium. Replacing the roll with two slices of store-bought bread can reduce the amount of sodium by more than 50%. By baking your own bread, you can reduce the amount of sodium even more. For home cooking, switching from fine grain table salt to coarser kosher or sea salt can cut sodium by 50%. After you've adjusted to eating less salt, cut back a little more until added sodium totals less than 2,500 milligrams daily. Tip number two is to remove the salt shaker from your table. Unless you cook all your meals without adding salt, herbs, or spices, there's no need for a salt shaker. Season your foods to taste as you cook it. Tip number three is that prepared organic foods are not automatically low-sodium foods. Foods certified organic can have as much or more sodium than non-organic versions. This organic macaroni and cheese has 520 milligrams of sodium per one cup serving. A two tablespoon serving of this organic salsa provides 220 milligrams of sodium. Two tablespoons of organic salsa with one ounce of organic tortilla chips provides over 300 milligrams of sodium. Tip number four is understanding sodium labeling. In the U.S., food manufacturers must label prepared foods in accordance with FDA regulations. For example, a product labeled salt or sodium-free must have less than 5 milligrams of sodium per serving. Low sodium means no more than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving. A food labeled 50% less sodium does not mean it's a low-sodium food. In this case, you get 400 milligrams of sodium per serving instead of 860 milligrams. Tip number five is to compare the amount of sodium per serving. Many diet experts recommend avoiding prepared foods providing more than 500 milligrams of sodium per serving. This prepared tomato sauce meets the 500 milligram per serving criteria but the serving size is only one half cup. If you like your pasta with a lot of tomato sauce, adding one cup of sauce easily exceeds the 500 milligram recommendation. With this brand, using two to three times the serving size provides a fraction of the sodium of the previous brand. 
Tip number six, should you buy stock or broth? Many recipes call for stock or broth. In general, prepared broths tend to have more sodium than prepared stocks. As I've already pointed out, a product can have 50% less sodium, but that doesn't mean it's a low sodium food. With increased concern about excess added sodium, some prepared foods have no added salt, but that does not mean the product is zero sodium. Without added salt, this beef broth has 75 milligrams of sodium per serving. Tip number seven is rinsing high sodium canned beans and vegetables. Some organic canned beans and vegetables are low sodium. If only higher sodium varieties are available in your area, you can reduce the amount of sodium by up to 40% by rinsing before using. It's still more than the low sodium varieties, but every little bit counts. Tip number eight is taste before adding salt. This may seem like a no brainer, but some people automatically add salt to their food before tasting it. While the amount of added sodium is minimal compared to the amount already in many prepared foods, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Before reaching for the salt shaker, taste your food before adding salt. As you reduce the amount of salt in your food, you will begin to notice how salty some prepared foods taste. Tip number nine is to replace prepared foods with home cooked foods. Prepared foods include fast food, coffee shop foods, restaurant and prepared meals, and prepared salads and sandwiches. If you're serious about reducing the amount of sodium in your diet, here are the top 10 foods that will make the biggest impact. Most restaurant and prepared foods are notoriously high in sodium. A sandwich and fried potatoes can provide up to a day's worth. Two restaurant pancakes can provide a half a day's worth of sodium and a restaurant breakfast can provide up to a day's worth. Many sweet foods are also high sodium foods. This coffee shop morning bun has 440 milligrams. By comparison, this homemade cinnamon roll has 70 milligrams. Salt is added to many sweet foods to enhance sweetness, to balance sweet and salty, and as a preservative. Tip number 10 is to increase dietary potassium. Potassium and sodium are essential nutrients and both are together in group one of the periodic table. A diet of high sodium prepared foods tends to be a low potassium diet. The recommendation for daily potassium ranges between 2,500 to 4,500 milligrams. Increasing potassium can help reduce the negative effects of excess sodium. Links for three videos of high potassium foods is provided in the description of this video. Tip number 11 is cook with herbs and spices instead of only salt. A mixture of herbs and spices adds flavors not possible when only cooking with salt. You can also spice up your foods by adding a variety of chilies. You can still add salt, but you may not have to add as much to flavor your foods. Your meals will still provide sodium, but much less compared to using only salt for seasoning. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.